three, two, one. Here we go! Hey, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jack Zai. This channel is about uh, DIY projects and um, if you're interested in this content, please consider subscribing. Uh, today I'll be showing you the secrets of how to make uh, pier caps. So in the last video you saw me with some piers and you saw me putting on some pier caps and you're all asking uh, how did you make those or where did you get those? Um, so in this video I'll be showing you how to make them. Uh, so start off with, I'll just show you some of the PPE, like personal protective equipment that you'll use to keep yourself safe. So we've got a dust mask. And I've got some trusty gloves. And I've got some earmuffs for mixing. I'll go through the the tools and the equipment that you'll need to to make it. So hammer, some used tires, piece of wood for screeding, laundry tub. What what I've got set up is um, just some old tires. Uh, they obviously hold the mold in place because the mold is. Uh, triangular. Mixer. For mixing the concrete. Just plug this one in. Now to actually make the Pier cap, you've got two choices. You could use aggregate and cement and water and mix it yourself. Um, or the other option, your second option is just go with a um, pre mix. Um, what else I've got? I've got also some mold release, but they're fairly expensive, so instead I just I'm just using a regular cooking oil. Uh, I'm gonna spray it. Give it a good shake. What this will do is, um, when when it sets, it's much easier to pop out. Yep. Jugs for filling water. So I'll prepare and just fill up these jugs with water. Um, you can use any water, it doesn't have to be special water. Um, I'm just really cheap, cheapskate, so I'm just going to be using some rain water. You could use distilled water, mineral water if you really wanted to. Okay, so let's do the mixing. So we've got some aggregate. So these two buckets are aggregate. And I've just got some regular cement. Uh, we're going to mix the ratio of 3 is to 1 and add some water into the laundry tub. And we're just going to give it a good mix. So the reason I'm using mixing it myself is because I had this leftover from doing a slab, like a cement slab on a shed. So rather than putting this material to waste, I thought it'd just make a pier cap. You, you could, of course, also, instead of mixing it yourself, you could just get a bag of pre-mix. That's your other option. Um, pre-mix basically mix it everything for you in the right ratio. You can get it at um, Bunnings or hardware store. Um, it's around 10 to 10 to 12 dollars for a bag. Uh, when it comes to making this material, you need to make sure that you always have 
more than what you need. If you if you come up short, it's gonna be a really disaster. So always have more material than you you, you plan to use. Uh, it's totally depending on how big of a pier cap you're making. So some of these are really big, whereas others are just really small. So this will be like a bag will be enough to make this one. Whereas this one probably need a bag and a half or close to two bags to, to make it. Uh, so let's get mixing. Uh, to start off with, I'll just add some water. Way too wet. Uh, add some more. Yeah, it's looking much better. I'm doing a circular motion, which is good. Now for the first part, which is very important, I'm going to be just uh, hand shoveling a little bit of this out. I'll show you, I'll explain why. Um, it's all to do with air bubbles, so basically uh, you don't want any air bubbles forming. I'll show you an example later on uh, if if there are air bubbles. See how I'm pressing down like this? It helps to remove some of the air bubbles. Gonna pour it out. Let me get in all to all the corners. Uh, it's important not to overfill it as well. And pretty much done it. Um, so you can see in terms of wastage, there isn't too much wasted. Um, so I'm just doing some final adjustments. So you want everything to be fairly level. So if you find that the cement's uh, leaking out at one side, then you you kind of, I'm just pulling the side a little bit higher so that it evens out. Um, now, this is one of the second uh, last final steps, but it's one of the most important steps to get a really decent finish. Um, and that's to avoid air bubbles. How you do that is you just get a regular hammer and 
you tap the sides of the tire, not not on the mold itself, but the tire. You fed it, you hit it fairly, a fair bit of force, and you can see the the air bubbles. What what that does is it makes the air bubbles rise to the top. So at at the bottom, you're not going to get any air bubbles. diligent you are at hitting this it is a lot of work but the more you hit it you can see more of the air bubbles comes to the surface you basically don't want any air bubbles oh, no. there's some there's some air bubble there see that that means it's coming through you basically keep hitting until there's Pretty much no air bubbles. Yeah, that's looking really good. We're just gonna leave this to cure and set, then uh, we'll come back and uh, screed it. Cool. Uh, here is an example of one that wasn't that done so well. We didn't have whack the hammer. The hammer. We didn't whack the hammer that that hard. You can see there's air bubbles here throughout here and you don't get a really good finish look at that so this is what happens when air bubbles uh, are trapped between the mold and uh, the concrete this one is done much better you can see it's smooth it's a really good finish and here's two that i made earlier that one looks nice this one, yeah, see this one's a really good finish. Virtually no air bubbles. Oh, the ones with the little tiles looks good. Yeah. Here are some that I've made earlier. So we've let that dry a bit. Now we're gonna screed it a bit to get a flat finish. And we're just using this uh, regular piece of wood that's flat at the bottom. So we're just going to leave this to, to dry, it'll take uh, around 4 days for it to dry and for it to reach the maximum hardness. 3 days later. Uh, so if, if the weather and the climate is really hot and dry, um, the cement can get thirsty and if that's the case what you, you should do is once it's dried a bit, you could um, add a bit of water and just give it some water. I'll do that now. I'm going to give it a, a little bit of water. So you can actually hear the, the cement actually drinking the water. Very thirsty. So the cement would have fully dried and now we're ready to harvest our uh, pier cap. Um, what I'm gonna do now is just tip it out into the backyard. Okay. Depending on what size mold you made, this will be very heavy. Just try it. It's probably a good idea to have um, a helper to help you and lift this. Just... 
or the moment of truth. And there you have it. So you can see um, we didn't whack it too well on this side. So there's some air bubbles. But uh, I think I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's pretty good. Okay. And of course we should always uh, clean out the mold afterwards, after each use. So, yeah, we've got three, and then over on this side, also made another three, so that makes it six, that's six pier caps, and ready to be installed. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're interested in other great content, uh, do please do consider uh, liking and subscribing to this channel, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next video.